Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see a full house on a wet and rainy day. I just told Skip that we should add a door prize to give away a kayak. <laughs> it would have been very useful Art. today. Right, yes, well, that would have worked too. Kayak would be a good start. Um, I am Scott Baker. I work for Crawford Technologies. I've been in this industry for a long time. I spent nine and a half, ten years with uh, Quadiant, uh, actually GMC software before it was Quadiant. I actually go back to microfiche, for those of you that remember microfiche. I helped sell machines that made microfiche out of computer output data. So I've seen about everything that you can see in this industry and probably uh, know some people that were involved in inventing it. Um, when I saw Skip's presentation title, I thought, oh my God, he's gonna steal my thunder. We're gonna use the same to statistics and my presentation will be very, very, very short. Fortunately, we talked to different analysts and <laughs> different studies, and so I have more fun facts to show you relative to what's going on in the industry for, for uh, customer experience. And we are gonna talk about customer experience. The purpose of me talking to you today is about customer experience and how it relates to the mobile experience. Skip was, you know, Good to point out to you that uh, all sorts of people use their mobile devices for everything. I've got some statistics that are pretty stunning relative to mobile usage to open emails in the UK and the US and in Canada uh, that I'll get to in a little bit. But the bottom line is we live and breathe and die with our mobile phones. You know, given a choice between losing a spouse and losing your mobile phone, for some people that's a toss up. <laughs> And for other people, it's, an, it's a no-brainer. The phone is the most important thing because your life is on there, your schedule is on there, your pictures are on there, you know, all your contacts are on there. So <clears throat> understanding that we live using our mobile devices as a guide to help us navigate the, the, the vagaries of life, doesn't it make sense that companies that are interested in improving customer experience would focus on the mobile device as the delivery mechanism for that, or the interface, if you will. And so that's what we're gonna talk about. Um, we all have industry trends and, and statistics to get your attention and to provide uh, credibility. To me, this is incredible. Monthly email opens by environment. This came from a, 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 a study called the Email Client Experience in, in the US and in Canada, in Great Britain and in Australia. Over 71% of these people 76 in the case of the UK, use mobile devices to access email. They don't go to the desktop, they use their mobile device. Skip showed you this one earlier, 86% of consumers are willing to pay for more, uh, for more for a great customer experience. This is scarier. Over 80% of organizations expect to compete mainly based on customer experience by the year 20, 2020, next year. By 2020, customer experience will overtake price and product as the, more, um, uh, the key brand differentiator. When you start thinking about things like that, and you're a product manager, what does that tell you? You've gotta rely on a lot of other people to help, to help you get your message out, and to ensure that you're taking care of your customers. Skip was very eloquent in explaining that CCM has a key position in delivering great customer experience. Uh, and this is a quote from David Stable from Keypoint Intelligence. CCM technology space has seen a major, major innovations in recent years focusing on digital experiences, mobile enablement, and customer empowerment. The rest of what we're gonna talk about today are those things, pretty much. Okay, <clears throat> everyone wants to talk about customer experience. All the companies, all the analysts, they're all saying, you've got to improve your customer experience. What I found really interesting from this study from Genesis is that of all the people they surveyed, all the customers they surveyed, all the, the uh, companies they surveyed, 96% of them have initiatives to track customer experience. For those of you that are Comcast customers, you may not believe that, but the reality is 
94%. Now, the other interesting thing is that <clears throat> just under half of those initiatives lie with the customer care people, the customer service representatives. A lot of software, a lot of call centers, a lot of information. Those people are handling a lot of these initiatives. You know, um, the CXO, CMO, those types of folks are, are, are covering a lot of it. And marketing runs it in a lot of cases. So things are sort of split. In fact, we find the customer experience management, the responsibility for improving customer experience is sort of all over the place and remains siloed. In another study, the 2019 State of Digital Customer Experience by CMS Wire, a lot of people are expecting CEOs, the C-suite, to lead CX technology investments. Marketing 28%, IT 14%. This is paradigm shift. Customer communications management, the print shop, getting things in the mail stream, communicating with your customers, a lot of times falls to IT. In terms of CX, this is not the case. One of the challenges for the vendors in this room, mm -hmm. and one of the challenges for you who may be interested in leading your, your, your companies forward in customer experience, is you don't rely on the same folks. Different people are driving the bus, potentially. And you have to figure out who, the, who those people are, and you have to figure out how to lead them or help them get where they want to go. <clears throat> so all sorts of enterprises are investing in technologies to improve customer experience. Tons of them. Journey mapping has been messed, uh, or mentioned earlier. Who knows what a customer data platform is? Small percentage of people. Okay, Customer data platforms are emerging to capture all the real-time interactions as they're happening, as well as the emails and the, mess, the tweets and the phone calls and the, all the interactions you have with a customer. Bring it together with your legacy data, statements, things like that, correspondence, in one place. You run analytics against it so you can help figure out what the next best experience is going to be for your customers. Um, AI, machine learning, predictive analytics, everyone's familiar with the buzz around it, preference capture and management. How can you improve the customer experience if you don't know what your customers want? If they don't have a platform to tell you what they want, an easy way to do it, you're sort of stuck. Mobile app development, uh, developing interactive applications, some of the vendors here do that, that's what, part of what their software does. <clears throat> the bottom line is, the top of the list is about gaining real-time customer insights. A 360-degree view of a customer, how many times have we heard that? Sort of a unicorn people are chasing though, because it's really hard to do. It's hard to figure out how to capture all the information that you need to stuff into a CDP, in addition to buying a CDP. <clears throat> The other side of the coin is to do a better job of personalizing messages. People tell you what they want, what channel they want to use, those types of things. Theoretically, you can come up with a better offer for them at the right time, that type of stuff. So these are the things that are driving investments in CX technology to improve the customer experience. <coughs> Why do we want to do that? Because that's how people are going to compete. They're not going to worry about price. They're not going to worry about products and features. It's all about the customer experience. OK, so uh, from the same CMS Newswire study that uh, uh, occurred in, in 2018, was published in early 2019, these are the five areas of digital customer experience investments that their multiple thousands of companies that they surveyed were spending money on. Analytics and dashboarding was high on the list. Customer data management and data integration. How do I put it all together? How do I analyze it? How do I look at it? Interestingly enough, number six on the hit parade was mobile investments. Mobile apps or mobile touch points.
What are the challenges? <clears throat> I'll tell you, it's expensive to improve customer experience. A lot of CMOs, a lot of CFOs, a lot of CIOs will tell you that. Number one, they don't know where to start. They've got a lot of money they're spending and th some of them are throwing it up at the wall like drunken sailors. Trying to figure out how to overcome these things, okay? Customer experience crosses silos. It touches different parts of the business. And breaking down the silos, limited cross-department collaboration was number one on their hit parade. Limited budgets, siloed systems, siloed customer data. Does this describe your organizations? It describes a lot of organizations. We have an insurance customer in the United States. We did a lot of work for them. They have 46 different lines of business. They do not have a centralized customer repository. They don't know who all their customers are because the customer lists are owned by the lines of business. How do you improve customer experience if you don't know who your customers are? The list exists one place, and guess where it is? The print shop, because those people have to cleanse the data that goes to BCC so it can be postal sorted for optimization. They've got a problem. We talk to our contacts and they say, you know, we need to have that conversation it's about four levels higher than me. And I don't necessarily know who that person is. Yes, my dear. I have a question. Yes. You, you knew it was just a matter of time. Sure. So I'm curious, when you're talking about top behavioral CX challenges because we are in Canada, for how many is localization for the Quebec market an issue? Because I and I and I get why it's not really percolating in, in some of this because we're talking about, you know, red legislations and, and um, overarching, and I know we have like, you know, HIPAA and HIPAA and CASA, we've got different regulations, but there is an overarching issue I know for a lot of Canadian companies when it comes to communicating with customers in Quebec, because French must be the first language. Sure. How does that impact all of this? Joanne, that's like the crux <laughs> of customer experience. You need, it's, it's, just, it's more important than channel, it's more important even than messaging. Talk to me in the language I can understand. This is what we deal with all the time in the accessibility world, constantly. Websites have to be accessible. You know, how many websites do you go to where you see the little flags and you get to choose what language, you know? It would be great, wouldn't it, if you were a customer and you were logging on, that they knew what your language preference was. How many Mobile apps, when you're setting a profile up, ask you what your language preference is. Probably not that many, because they didn't think about it at the time. They were thinking about it, the programmers were putting it together. Wouldn't it be great if you had a preference management system that you could bolt onto the damn CRM systems that would give you the granularity that you needed? But yeah, language is fundamental. Why do you think when your bank sends out the legal disclaimer, it comes to you in 18 different languages? Wouldn't it just be cool if they sent you the one that was in the language that you spoke first, your primary language? Great question. Thank you for asking. I'll give you $5 Canadian afterwards to thank no, you properly. I'll take the US <laughs> <laughs> um, The bottom line, there are a lot of challenges, right? <clears throat> Some of them we know in our industry how to overcome because we've been doing it as we build and building customer communications that go and get in the hands of customers in the mail stream today that they actually open up and read because their bills, their statements, their policies. Okay, so who's pushing CX related agendas? Well, the analysts are. We know that Gartner and Forrester and IDC and Aberdeen and Ovum and you name the, keep naming them, they're all talking about CX, they're all writing about CX because it's cool. Digital transformation is cool, it's hot, it's the next big thing. It also has impact. There are a lot of CDP vendors out there that didn't exist five years ago, or four years ago, or three years ago. There's some big gorillas like Adobe and Oracle, Oracle Unity, Adobe Experience uh, Cloud, Experience Manager, 
they want to be the, your CDP vendors. They want to be the place where all this data goes, that you analyze to figure out what the next best experience will be. Uh, the CCM vendors have been talking about customer experience for a while. Well, message point, quadient, they do journey mapping, they do all sorts of things to get people to think about customer experience and improving the customer experience. And to the point that we skipped made earlier, that CCM is a key component of the customer experience because you're delivering content that customers need to see or want to see. There are lots of BI and AI vendors out there, everybody from IBM Watson and the SAS Institute. Uh, there are hundreds more that are also talking about customer experience related stuff, but they want to intelligently learn how your customers' behaviors are and use that information to predict what the next best experience will be. They want to make recommendations. They want to tie together the dots. They want to put together the little pieces that will know when to offer you that vacation in Bangkok, when you'll say yes. <laughs> Mobile app development vendors. How many of the people in this room have, your companies have mobile apps, or you've developed mobile apps, or you're developing mobile apps on be behalf of your customers? On your mobile phone, how many mobile apps do you have? I have hundreds. I have hundreds, okay. These guys, Kony, Mendix, Oracle, K2, some of you you've heard of, I'm sure, some of you haven't, have low-code, no-code development tools to help you quickly build apps. And what do apps do? Mobile apps do. They let you connect to something. They let you have an experience. A big thing is that <coughs> These guys build containers for content. They don't build content. They do not build content. Content gets built here and through other applications. But they're in there pitching as well, and they're pushing CX. Let's improve the customer experience, and we'll show you how. We'll help you build an app so your customers can connect. Somebody else that's key to the customer experience puzzle are the vendors that do video. I don't know how many of you have used interactive videos before. I was just at a conference uh, uh, about a month ago in Dallas called Dig In, Digital Insurance, the Future of Insurance, and saw some great applications where literally you could go from website to buying product, a policy, getting it underwritten and delivered to you electronically, digitally, in email with links to interactive videos in five minutes or less. Pretty incredible stuff. All right, the policy was delivered as interactive video. This is how you <coughs> access the features of your policy. So you click the video, you watch the video, and you learn how to <coughs> make, you know, contact the insurance company in case you're in a car accident. You know, um, you push another one to figure out what your legal limits are or legal responsibilities are relative to medical exposure, uh, medical claims exposure and things like that. It was really, 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 really cool how it all worked together. Now, somewhere in the background, there's a process that generates the policy as a system of record, it goes into a system of record, an archive system, but this experience was the farthest thing you could ever imagine from traditional sitting down with your insurance agent, filling out the forms, taking the medical tests, sending it all in, waiting for three weeks until the underwriters come back from vacation to say, yeah, we'll, we'll give you this policy. Five minutes, soup to nuts. It was awesome. And what made it work was the Pitney Bowes interactive video solution that they had <laughs> to deliver. That's what we're talking about in terms of improving customer uh, experiences. Um, I grabbed this quote from the Top Down Systems website. When you click on their About Us, this is one of the things it says. Companies obsessed with continuously improving their customer experience see CCM 
for what it truly is, mm -hmm. an integral part of their customer experience that directly affects customer retention and revenue. Far cry from we do document composition in the cloud. David Stable again, I'm, I'm bringing this quote up, digital experiences, mobile enablement, consumer empowerment. This is CCM and CX. Another David Stable, David Stable quote, 64% of enterprise respondents to InfoTrends research acknowledge that their CCM platform is critical to improving customer experience. Okay, so how do we play? How does CCM, how do, as vendors, how do we play in this marketplace? How do we, as vendors, help you, as customers and companies, achieve your desired outcomes relative to customer experience, improving customer experience as well? Journey mapping, okay? We can take existing templates for stuff, redesign them to output HTML5 so it's in a mobile-ready format. You can create interactive documents. A lot of the, the document composition environments allow you to do that. You can build interactive documents and deliver them on mobile devices. <coughs> yes, sir. Um, Interestingly enough, you'd probably use the same data, but you wouldn't use the same template. You know, you can talk to uh, some of the other uh, composition vendors here, but in most cases, you have a template that drives output from the mail stream, and you'll have to rebuild that template to drive output that goes to uh, mobile devices or, or electronic devices. Uh, I'm not going to speak for them. They're here. They can speak for themselves. Well, but, yeah. Um, you don't need multiple data sources, but you need multiple templates is, is the answer to that. All right, so basically, if you're using data to generate a, com a, a composed file that you can send to a printer, you'd use the same data to generate a composed file in HTML. You'd need a separate template, okay? If you're asking, can I use the print ready file once it's been generated to drive both? The answer was not, not too long ago you couldn't, now you can. All right, so we'll get there. <laughs> we will get there. The big thing about how we play as CCM vendors in this marketplace is we're really trying to make legacy applications and data and documents work in a web world. That's the challenge in tying CX and CCM together. How do I take stuff that's stored in an archive system that's 20 years old in an AFP format and on demand give it to somebody in a mobile ready format, okay? We'll talk about how you can do that now and pretty easily. But not too long ago, you couldn't do that at all. Or you'd have to go through all sorts of hoops to make it happen. Okay. I always give you the facts, you know, fun facts to know and tell, and the challenges, okay? One of the challenges in making your composition environment, your CCM environment, generate mobile-ready documents is that you need a, a modern platform to do it. If you're one of those companies that has you know, expressions or CompuSet running on a mainframe, good luck. You're going to have to upgrade. You're going to have to do some changes. All right. <clears throat> a lot of people will tell you it takes way too long. I've got thousands of templates. There's an insurance company I mentioned earlier. 2,800 separate templates that were all live, generated across multiple composition environments, 46 lines of business. Turning that stuff into a format that's mobile ready to improve customer uh, experience is a non-starter. 
It's not going to happen. It's way too expensive. You know, the ROI is difficult to document. It really is. <clears throat> Most solutions have no answer for what to do with archived documents. You think about it. A lot of companies' workflows are predicated on taking their print stream in whatever format it is, AFP, PDF, you name it, they run it into an archive. They put it into an archive immediately because that's what customer service uses when they answer questions for people that call in. It's also where customers go, ultimately, though they may not know it, when they're on their mobile app and they request a copy of a statement. We do that for a lot of customers, quite frankly, where somebody comes in online, they want to see a copy of their statement, we dive into the archive, convert it from whatever format it was on the fly into PDF so they can see it. Which in itself is kind of cool. It's good customer experience that you can retrieve it fast. I'll tell you, it sucks as a customer experience when you want to use it. How many people actually look at PDF files on their mobile phones? You may retrieve a pile of them, but how many actually use them? I don't. I try to. I get it. It's there. What do I do? First thing I do is I go like this, and then I go like this. I pinch, I squint, and I turn my phone like this, and I go like this, and I go like this, and then I finally go, to hell with this. I'll look at it when I get home. You know, and then what do I do? After a month or so when I'm running out of memory, I've got to free up some memory. There are hundreds of PDF files I've downloaded to my phone. What do I do with them? Delete, 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 delete. I never see them. I never see them. The pinch and the squint do not work. <laughs> so though, that's a big challenge. How do you get people to use it? <clears throat> We'll segue here, the theoretical into the practical. Content should be like water. When you put water in a cup, you put water in a teapot, you put water in a vase, it takes the shape. The water becomes the object. Okay, we are spoiled as consumers using mobile devices. You go to Amazon, you go to any website, they're all responsive now. They look good on your phone most of the time, regardless. And when they don't, what happens? You navigate away, right? <clears throat> Content should be the same way. We're spoiled. We want it to be that way. As a point for delivering a good customer experience, doesn't it make sense we would give our documents to people who request them in a mobile-ready format? It does this. How often does that happen? Not very often. You go to a bank, you go into an insurance company, you want to see your document, they give it to you as PDF. They don't give it to you as HTML5. <clears throat> so, mobile ready HTML5 is designed to make your pages look good on all devices. It responds to the device. You don't have to tell it what device you have, it responds to the device. Basically what you're doing is using cascading style sheets and HTML to reorient the pages so they look good on your mobile device. Rocket science, no, <laughs> you can do it today. So you want the desktop experience to be as good as the tablet experience, to be as good as the mobile phone experience. A lot of websites today are designed mobile first. We are not designing our documents mobile first. But we can. You can change the game. Uh, typical use cases. I have a print-ready file. I want it to be mobile-ready output, and I want it to look just like the original document. Another case, <clears throat> so I'm going to take my legacy file, again, any print-ready file, but I want to enhance it along the way. I want to make it pretty. I want to make it color. 
I want to make links hot so I can link to offers, so I can link to customer support, so I can have questions answered, but in a mobile-ready format. And oh, by the way, another use case that we see a lot is mobile-ready plus accessible. Because 70 to 80 percent of people who are site-challenged use their mobile devices to navigate the world. Screen readers have to work. <laughs> you want to take advance, advantage of voiceover. You want to take advantage of the tools that they use, assistive technologies. Delivering a mobile-ready format is imperative. Um, it's technical magic, and if you'd like to talk offline, we can do that because I don't want to go down that rat hole right now. But <laughs> technology is designed to deal with that downsampling. All right. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, change the game. A simple change in thought with organizations is improve customer experience by delivering customer communications in mobile ready formats. Earth shattering, I know. This is where the point of the spear is. This is where you meet your customers most often. That's the reality. So how cool would it be to create mobile-ready document output without having to redesign document composition templates to generate the output? So <clears throat> fun facts to know and tell, basically, you have the opportunity to very quickly use a print ready file that you would send to a printer and turn it into a mobile ready document without having to reinvent the wheel, having to go back to the source. At the same time, because you can start with a print ready file, you can put a happy web face on those legacy documents that are stored in archives. Think about it. Where are your exposures? Legally, where are your exposures relative to accessibility? They're not in day forward. They're in your archive. They're in the 20 years of history that you have. How cool would it be if you could take that historical document and turn it into a mobile-ready format that somebody could consume and use on their mobile device when they wanted to? without having to reinvent the wheel. Okay, what does that mean? In a batch environment, I can go mobile, I can take the output of any composition environment and turn it into mo mobile-ready, omni-channel-ready communications. You can do the same thing through a solution that we have called Sunrise that connects the archives, the multiple archives that you have, with the UIs, the self-service portals, the mobile apps and things like that that people use to access information self-service and deliver mobile-ready documents out of an archive. I never in a million years thought when I was going to do presentations that I would ever have Oprah Winfrey in her picture on one of my slides. But at the end of March, she was at the Apple TV event where they were making all sorts of announcements. She's talking with Tim Cook and she's talking about how great Apple products are. And she put into perspective why we should care about delivering mobile-ready documents. I want to leave you with this. They're in a billion pockets. Mobile devices. Apple. She's talking Apple devices. She's not talking Samsung's or anybody else's. 
they're in a billion pockets. You want to deliver customer experiences to people who are potential customers? Mobile devices are in a billion pockets. Why in the hell would we as vendors and we as companies not want to deliver content in a mobile-ready format to take advantage of that fun fact to know and tell? Okay, <clears throat> real world, ca world case study. We're doing this for a large insurance company in the United States. They wanted to deliver EOBs to their members in an accessible format because they were worried about their obligations under Section 508, Section 504, accessibility regulations. Their solution was to take all the AFP that was available through their Mobius archive system that had been around since God was a child, it was mainframe based, and on demand, in milliseconds, respond with either HTML5 or PDF, whatever the member wanted, and deliver it in an accessible format which means that it could be used using assistive technologies. It's the right thing to do for the people who are site challenged. It's a compliant thing to do in terms of meeting the regulations. It's a smart thing to do in terms of mitigating the risk of fines and the bad press and stuff that goes along with it. It was a simple, straightforward solution. One that I was just talking about a little bit. Dynamically, putting a happy web face on an archive. Joanne. How long did it take and how much did it cost? Um, Ernie, we want to get... Sorry. I, I know everyone's thinking it, right? Um, ac actually, Ernie can tell, talk to you about that offline, necessarily. Um, but it wasn't as long as you thought, and it didn't cost as much as you, you, you would anticipate. I think the entire project, in terms of by the time we, we actually got down and hammered out the statement of work and project plan to, you know, when, when we had uh, samples ring was like, like three to four months. It was, it was very fast. It was very fast. Well, that's the whole project. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, but great. I, again, I know a lot of software Yep. All right. This is my last slide, or second to the last slide. Uh, if you're curious about how to improve your customer experience, and curious about uh, mobile delivering mobile ready documents to your customer, these are some questions that you need to figure out. Or if you can figure them out or figure out who's asking the questions or guarding this information, it, uh, it'd be a good thing. So number one, is your company tracking CX related issues. Initi uh, are you, do you have initiatives to track CX? Do you use like NPS, Net Promoter Score, or other ways of measuring customer satisfaction? How does your organization handle online customer requests to view documents today? You know? Is it self-service? Do they have to call CSRs? Do they have to call an agent up to figure out how to get information? According to recent research, almost 70% of online interactions originate by a mobile phone. Is that the case for your organization? You know, are, are you being a slave to customers who want omni-channel and you're not giving it to them? They start on a mobile device, they end up on a, completing a transaction on a laptop. Or, I'm in the store, I comparison shop on my mobile phone, I contact Amazon, I look at the competitors. You know, how, how, how are your customers dealing with this and, and are you giving them stuff that they want to see? Is your company's mobile app or website delivering documents in a mobile friendly format? My guess would be, uh-uh. My guess would be also that somebody would like to do that if they knew they could because that's an easy thing to do to improve your customer experience. Give 
people documents and formats they can use without having to pinch and squint. You know, another question, are your customers requesting accessible documents? Are they requesting documents in a different language? Give them what they want. Know your customers. How do you fulfill those requests? How do you capture those preferences? You can and should do what you can to improve your customer experience. You should help your companies achieve those desired outcomes because your companies are going to be competing based on customer experience. I'm done. Sorry, Skip, I think I went over a little bit. But, are there questions? Yes? Pardon me? Do you have any tools to implement that uh, to be in complement with uh, ADA? Ab oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Ernie's going to talk about that in a bit. The question was, do we have tools that, that help companies become compliant with accessibility regulations? And the, the answer is yes. As a solution provider or a system builder, I can totally agree and see what those pain points are and what's the need for going through modern platform. How well does this resonate with the actual customer? Because most of the cases where I see, unless until they are pressured to go like, hey, the product you're using is out of support, mm -hmm. you definitely have to go. Unless until they, they see that pressure, they're not ready to move towards the modern platform. Regardless of what it offers, so how do you see these platforms? Well, uh, actually, I see them resonating re really well because the solution that we're talking about doesn't require them to re throw out or replace any of their existing systems. It takes the output of their existing system, whether it's an old one or a new one or it's multiple. They don't have to eliminate any of them. They can leverage what they have and move into the future at the same time. So the answer is, we, th we feel pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it.